What's up, everybody? This is Javier Vasquez, and you are watching footage of me rolling with one of my blue belts at the Strike Base Jiu Jitsu Academy in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, you could also follow me on Instagram at Strike Base Jiu Jitsu. Uh, and you could also, of course, follow me on this channel at Strike Base Jiu Jitsu on YouTube. So uh, we will be breaking down, I'm going to be doing a lot of these breakdowns now with with strikes and without this particular rolling session is without strikes um, just rolling with one of my guys is a very casual roll I'm just having fun and I already tried to attack a reverse arm bar on his left arm and I ended up catching him there and it looks like he's hurt but he's fine he's fine uh, I just stretched him out a little bit the foot on the hip is what really extended him out which caused the reverse arm lock to get locked out so again, as always, I'm not allowing the opponent to get a hold of my neck. I am in a half a guard with half butterfly at this point, and the opponent is trying to drop his weight, and eventually he wants to get to my neck. This particular student, his name is James Kell, but we don't call him James Kell. We call him Hair Force One, because if you notice his hair, it is absolutely flawless. And you, the guy can roll for two and a half hours, and his hair looks exactly the same. So I don't know what he's doing, but it's fantastic. So there I was. I used the reverse arm lock on the opposite arm, and I got him to roll over to the mount. So I ended up mounting him. And I ended up pinning his wrist here with my right hand and handing it off to my hand, which was hugging his neck. So I'm bugging his neck here. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just kind of bugging his neck to get him to react. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to see his elbow come up just kind of like what it's doing right now. Um, I push the elbow back down. Sometimes I'll mess with people to just kind of push the elbow. In reality, I really want the elbow up and I'll look to try to get the head and arm choke. This time I pinned the wrist and I'm looking to possibly get a mounted triangle. He bumped my base and escaped, but then I quickly went again, attacked it again and shot the arm over the head. So I'm pretty happy here. I got the head one arm in, one arm out. I'm controlling his head. And I'm looking to possibly pass his arm to close the triangle. There is a wall there, and you have to be aware of your surroundings. I actually used the wall to help me create the angle and lock the, tro lock the choke. Um, and because he was so close to the wall, he couldn't really circle in that direction. So I ended up catching him there again. So... Here's another roll, and again, I'm using hand control, two-on-one control. I'm using my butterfly hooks to put what I like to call tension in the rope by pushing away and pulling the arm that creates tension. Here, it creates resistance for the opponent so he can't move as easily. Um, most people would be trying to get a hold of my neck. James already knows um, that it's going to be a very difficult thing, so he's trying to kind of pass or slice through without having to get a hold of my neck. But I already know that that's where he's going so I just kind of keep him at bay and again working a lot of hand control I ended up scooping him under there I established what I like to call semi-ashi which I know most people don't know what the hell I'm talking about but it's when my right leg is across his hip and my left knee is um, between his legs see as you can see there my right leg is across his hip and I'm looking to scoop his heel and eventually tap them there. Yeah, so it's a position I really like to work from. I, I, I don't know the Japanese names to the move, so I just make up my own crap. So I call that semi-ashi. So James decides to stand up. I end up trapping his leg. Notice how I'm hugging my left uh, knee there, and that's actually trapping his foot so he can't pull it out. Um, he's controlling my right ankle, which is a little bit annoying. I end up clearing the hand, and now I'm almost like in an X-guard position. That is X-guard, actually. And I end up sweeping him there. And again, I'm entangling his leg again. I get to semi-ashi, but my left leg is now clear, so I'm actually um, almost in like the X position. I end up catching his heel again. Look at his hair. Sensational. Doesn't move. And it's not like it's got a bunch of hairspray on it or anything. It just, I don't know, he's got it trained so well, it just goes there in the morning. I think he just wakes up in the morning, looks in the mirror, says, go to your position. The hair goes to the position. I don't even know if it gets messed up at night. It's incredible. So here he is trying to slice through my guard. Again, my focus is that arm. Even if he passes my guard, I really don't care because he can't really drop weight unless he can get to my neck. So here we are in the basic 
SES position, two on one. He's in the side mount, but I'm again controlling two on one control, uh, preventing him from grabbing hold of my head. <clears throat> so he's got my arm trapped between his legs, and eventually, as I get my arm free by off balancing him back and forth, I'm going to try to bury my right elbow to the ground and eventually pulling my right arm out. Once my arm is out, which it will be here hopefully soon, um, then I will come back to two-on-one control. Notice how sticky my arm is underneath his armpit, and it creates a funky angle there to it's super awkward for the guy to, to, to get his arm out. I ended up rocking back and forth, and I ended up being able to come up to my knees. My arm is still trapped, and I have control of his wrist there. Notice I have two-on-one control, even though my right arm is trapped. And once I'm on top, I'm able to pull the arm out. So I'm in the side mount, I'm controlling his arm, and then eventually, and I shoot the leg over his arm, attacking a triangle. Change into the arm lock, and done it is. So I was messing with his arms to get him distracted, and then I shot my leg over his shoulder. Here we go again with the leg lock, and it's a done deal. So I'm just having fun with my guys. I like to play with the positions. I like to study the positions. Sometimes I like to get in, into positions with leg locks or whatever I'm working on and just seeing how people react. If you catch me, you catch me. If you don't, you don't. But I, I'm always learning and seeing what I can and can't do. Again, scooping the heel. Eventually, I'll catch it here. Boom. And I know that he can turn. I'm aware that he can turn. Most of my guys just kind of just tap. But I know he can turn. I'm ready to go with it or switch to the toe hold to finish with a different uh, technique. So if you notice that when he passes my guard, I, my left arm is hugging around his neck, that means his right arm is not hugging my neck. So as the guy passes my guard, I'm more concerned with where his right arm is landing rather than the fact that he actually passed my guard. So I'm holding his head down with my right arm. My left arm is kind of bracing the elbow and I'm just kind of Hanging out here, seeing what he's going to do. A lot of people will go to mount. If he goes to mount, I will drop my left elbow to the ground and start to elbow escape on his right leg. But I'm not really concerned here. I'm just, just hanging out. I gave him my neck there. And here comes the mount. But he gave a little bit too much space, so my left knee was able to sneak on the inside. My right leg, notice how I'm biting with my right leg on his back. That's really important. Um, detail there to keep the guy from spinning. That right leg will keep the guy, if he spins, it'll keep you in the same position. I'm actually using my left hand there to keep my right heel dug into the side of his body there. And eventually I work my way back to guard. So one of the things that I'm very comfortable with is, is any position. I'm, I'm comfortable in any bad position. I try to spend a lot of time there particularly with really good guys, to see what kind of attacks they can throw at me so I can understand how to defend a little bit better and not be caught off guard. So if I get caught, I get caught. It doesn't really bother me. But the fact that I'm constantly putting myself in these bad spots builds confidence and it makes me really, really relax while in, in danger, even if somebody really, really good is on top. So James is looking to swim his hand on the inside. I'm controlling his head, just kind of playing around here. I don't know what he's trying to do exactly, but I'm just kind of hanging out, allowing things to happen so I can capitalize on the position. Sometimes doing nothing is the best thing you can do. He's trying to trap my arm behind his back, but notice how I'm hooking his left arm or his right arm. So in order for him to grab my hand, he needs that right arm. That's what he's trying to grab it with. But because I'm hooking, he's hugging my neck and I'm kind of hooking his arm, it's preventing him from reaching. That's why he kind of smiled a minute ago because I'm just holding. He could put his, my arm behind my back all he wants, but he needs the other arm. That's what I'm saying right there. He needs the other arm, but because I'm not giving it to him, it's useless. So even though my wrist is in danger or my arm is in danger, it's really not because I'm actually blocking the arm that he needs uh, to grab. So um, these are the kinds of things that you realize, you know, when you put a lot of mat time in, um, a, more, a less experienced grappler would have panicked and let go of that arm 
And ultimately, he might have grabbed my right wrist with his right hand behind my back, which makes a fairly easy pass happen. So now he's able to clear his arm, and now he's looking to attack a Kimura on my right arm. And as he does that, I start to snake to his back. Whenever you reach across the body, it, it leaves an opportunity for somebody to snake your back. So just be aware, probably not the greatest idea to be attacking that from full guard. Little by little, I'm looking to get my inch my elbow back into position. My left arm is over the neck, or excuse me, over the shoulder looking to attack his neck, and just my hand being there kind of makes him let go of my arm, and now we're in full back mount. So right here, he should be looking to put his back on the ground, but I've got the mulligan in. Look at the way my legs are crossed. It's preventing him from turning his back to the ground in towards the right. So most people be, would be thinking, oh, okay, just put your back to the ground, but with the mulligan, you can't really do that. The twister. I'm going after a twister here. My buddy Carlos, who was filming, decided to tell me to go to the twister, and James was not real happy about it. But um, I'm just kind of going back and forth, just playing. Now I'm just kind of committed to going to the twister. Now, because James is fighting, now I want the twister. So it doesn't really matter. I have control of his arm. He's clearing my hooks. He's doing a good job not allowing me to do that, but I'm just kind of reestablishing back mount over and over and over again until he screws up, which eventually I have a feeling he's going to screw up here in a minute. So I kind of abort the twister and start attacking his neck. I'm attacking the arm. All I'm thinking right now is I want the twister. I don't want the arm lock. I don't want anything but the twister. So I'm kind of attacking things to kind of get him to move so I can reestablish my left hook and attack the twister. Might be my right hook that I catch him with. I'm not exactly sure. I'll, I'll find out here in a minute. Left hook goes in. I do what I call the hook drill, climbing up. Eventually, I'll probably roll to my side here. There it is. I get my second hook in. I call it the hook drill. And I'm attacking his neck or attacking his arm here, but it's all fluff. I don't want any of it. I want the twister. And I'm going to roll to it. And there's the arm. Boom, I locked the arm, and James is hating his life right now. But the hair looks sensational, James. No matter what happens, that hair looks amazing. I wrap it, and down he goes. So a lot of times I'll attack things just to get you to move, especially if you know what I'm going after. So I start mixing it up, uh, attacking different things to make you forget about what I originally wanted, and then I come back to it and catch it. As always, you can check out my academy website, GracieJiuJitsuRancho.com. And if you're interested in my online streaming service, go to strikebasejujitsu.com. Yeah, like I chose that, right?